All right, so we're going to take a look at how to use the Desmos calculator for pretty much all your work. So we'll start with the first one. This is how to use Desmos on three-step linear equations. All you're going to do is copy, which is Control C, the equation, the left-hand side, and then Control V uh, to paste it. So Control C, then come to a new line, Control V. Notice you might have an extra box that you need to get rid of, so you can do that. The intersection of those two points, because these two have to be equal to each other, right? So the intersection of these two equations is going to be your answer, or your x value is going to be your answer. All you have to do is click into one of these, and you can see a dot will appear, which gives you your x value of positive 1. So x is equal to positive 1. All right, now the key thing about this is there has to be um, an x on both sides. If there isn't, what you want to do is, of course, um, solve the equation to where you can put one x on that side and another x on that side. All right, so same thing with this. It doesn't matter what it is. If you have an equal sign, all I need, and again, I just said this, right? I need an X on both sides. So again, you're going to take Control C, highlight it, come here, Control V, get rid of the extra boxes that um, it copies into there, then Control C again on the right-hand side, Control V. Now, again, remember, because there isn't... Um, an X on both sides, that's why there, is, there isn't a solution happening. So I need to make an X on both sides. But notice that I have a negative 3X here, right? So we can move that negative 3X to the other side, and it's going to become what? Positive 3X. So I can put a positive 3X over here, and then take away this negative one that I moved, and look at that. Something has appeared, right? So let's see what uh, we're dealing with really quickly. If I press this home button right here, it will kind of zoom in, but it didn't help me. I'm, I'm trying to follow the intersection, and there we go. So I might have to move the line. Again, click in either one of these. The dot appears. So x is equal to negative 4. So x is equal to negative 4. All right, so solving equations. Oh, it's telling me just to type the negative 4 in there. Solving equations is simple. Left-hand side equals the right-hand side. All right, then we're going to go to determine if the graph is a function. This one, you don't need to cheat through it. It's a function if um, you draw a vertical line and it doesn't go through both points. So this one goes through both points, right? So it goes through here and it goes through here. So is that a function? No, it's not a function. All right, so not a function. So if it was a function, it only goes through one point wherever you draw your vertical line test. All right. Then we have determine if a set is a function. So this one you're looking for the x values. Are the x values repeating? So you just look at all the x values. So you have these, this, this, and this. Is that, and it's saying what it does not represent a function. So this one is a function because they're not repeating. What about this? Negative 3, negative 8, neg 3, and negative 3. That one is not a function. I'm just going to check the rest of them. 6, negative 1, negative 7, and 3. Not repeating, so it's a function. 3, 2, 9, and 4. Not repeating, so it's a function. So the only one that is repeating is this one right here. So a function is you can draw a vertical line test, or you can just look at whether the x is repeating or not. All right, then we're going to go back to writing equations of lines. You need to grab your formula sheet real quick for this one to write an equation of a line. If you look at your formula sheet, because this says of the line, it's a linear function. If you look at your formula sheet, it says y equals mx plus b. All right, what is, so it will tell you that, but you'll have to know what each thing is. What is m stand for? It's a slope, which is rise over run. And what does the plus B stand for? The y-intercept. What does that mean? Where it crosses, ooh, what are you doing? Where it crosses the y-axis. Okay, so have that written down somewhere, where it crosses the y-axis. Oh, it's going the wrong way. All right, so I'm going to look at that in order to write it down. So... It crosses the y-axis at 2, and then you pick any two points. I'm going to go from this point right here to this point right here to see my rise and run. So I'm going to rise 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I'm going up, it's positive, so it's going to be 6. So if you're going down, make sure you put negative. 
I went up 6 and then I went to the left 1. If I go left, it's negative, And if I go right, it's positive. So do whatever your graph is doing. Put this in the calculator. Press math, enter, enter. You're going to get negative 6. And it crosses at 2. So this is my slope and this is my y-intercept. And then all you have to do at that point is just put it into your answer. So y equals my slope, which was negative 6, x plus my y-intercept, which is 2. And again, another way to know that if your slope is positive or negative is from the left to the right, this is going down, so it's negative. If it was left to right going up, it would be positive. All right, so go ahead and just put in your equation, substitute in slope and the y-intercept, and then you can just go from there. Oh, did I get it wrong? I should. I think I did. So y equals... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1. That's negative 6 plus 1 and 2. Okay. What's it doing? It's not doing anything. Writing an equation given a linear situation. So again, what do I need? I need my y equals mx plus b. So I need whatever my slope is, how something is changing, plus B is where I start from, like what is my initial. All right, so how it's changing and then what is my initial. So again, it's Y equals then MX plus B. And I'm just going to put in the numbers. So blah, 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 blah. The temperature increased. Increased means a positive or negative? Positive. All right, the temperature increased as the snow began to melt at a steady rate. Okay, so there's a depth of 10 inches of snow. So there's my first number. What is that? Is that how it's changing or is that what it starts with? So it says there's a depth of 10 inches of snow in the lawn when the storm ended. All right, so that's my starting number, and I'm guessing it's going to melt. It's going to start melting at a rate of 2 inches per hour. So here's a hint. Whenever you see the word per, or, you know, like every those kind of words, that's your slope. That's how it's changing. So this one is melting. So if it's melting, is it increasing or decreasing? Is the snow getting less or is it getting more? Hopefully you said less. So negative 2. All right. So and again, write the equation. Read what it says in terms of T. So it's not going to be an X. It's going to be a T. All right. So again, my initial is my Y-intercept. My slope is how it's changing. All right, graphing lines from equations. So again, we're doing this simply by doing this in a calculator. So you're going to do control C. You're going to come over to your calculator, control V. All right, it's going to look a little funky. So you might have to like, you know, fix it. So go ahead and fix it. Make sure you copy the right thing. I need to put one divided by three here. All right, now I've double check my equation and then I'm going to press this home button. So hopefully it takes me where it is. And then I'm going to copy my points into here. So it looks like there's a point right there at 4. And I can zoom in if you want to, um, to where you, it goes up by 1. So you see there's a point there at 4. So I'm going to put a point there at 4. Then I need another point. So what I'm going to do, can I do, what I'm going to do is look for another corner. So a corner, all right, just to refresh your memory again, is if you look in the background, these are the grid, right, right here. This is the grid. A corner is where the purple line, so let me change the color, where the purple line goes through a corner, a cross. So right here is a corner, right here is a corner. Is this a corner? No, because if I had a line, it would be over here, right? So a corner is where it goes through the cross, all right? So that's what we're looking for. So if I come down this way, I'm looking for a corner. I think there's one right here. Yes, there is. So see right here? It goes through that cross all right so right here see there's that cross all right that's a corner so it's at three and then what's this number up here I'm just gonna go up real quick oh actually I should be going down I'm tripping <laughs> it's a three 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 it looks like it three three so I go to three three and I put a line there okay so I'm just gonna double check looks like there's a corner here at negative three five so I'm going to just kind of zoom out. Negative 3, 5, negative 3, 5, and there's a corner right there. So now I've double-checked my answer. That is correct. So all you're doing is putting it in and transferring it over. All right, so the next one 
Same thing with this, you're putting it in and transferring over. So again, to copy, control C, and to paste it in, you're gonna do control V. Make sure it's pasted everything it needs to be. And then we're going to copy it. This says, drag the red blue dots along the X axis. So you see, okay, and the Y axis to graph. So you just drag it. So I'm gonna go look at my Y axis and press the home button again. It looks like my Y is at at positive 10 so I'm gonna take this blue button and put it to positive 10 and then my X is at oh it's a decimal so with this one you got to be kind of close but of course when I give you the test I'll make sure it's a whole number so it's negative 3.33 so if I come right here to negative 3 and then 0.33 is maybe around here and I might get this wrong somewhere roughly around there but again on the test i'll make sure that this point is like at negative five or negative four or something okay so this one's negative 3.33 which is around there so let's see how sensitive it is okay so it's not that sensitive but again i'll make sure that on the test it's a whole number all right so copying and pasting identify the solution so just like we did the left side and the right side on the very first question the solution is just where they cross over so if i look where they cross that's two and three and if i look at the cross again right here so it goes x and then y so the number is four and negative one just where they cross okay the intersections all right so that one i didn't have to transfer over all right elimination copy and paste so we're going to copy how do i copy again Control c and how do i paste again Control v i'll we'll do the same thing for the other equation Control c and then how do I paste? Control V. All right, again, we just did it. Where's the solution? Where those two lines intersect. And to find those dots, if you click into any one of those two lines and you look at it, and there's your answer, negative eight and negative six. Negative eight and negative six. Press submit. You're looking good. All right, substitution, same thing. So we're gonna do Control C to copy and control V to paste. Again, get rid of the funky looking ones. Um, looks like on this side is just an X. And then here, control C. I'm gonna get rid of these extra ones. And control V. Okay, all right, so get rid of the funky looking ones, put in the missing thing. And once again, you're solving the system of equations so where they intersect so you click in one of these go to the intersection that's your answer so negative one and i believe it was negative five all right so you see how fast we're zooming through this so you don't really need i, I know it seems like a lot of questions but we've done like a third of it already and it's all calculator all right write a system of equations from context okay so this one you are going to have to work it out so remember we talked about how many numbers it is if it's four numbers it's exactly what you see if it's three numbers you got to match mat you got to match the dollar so i can see one two three four so if it's six numbers you just write them in order one two three four five six right but if it's four numbers you're going to match the dollars because it looks like it's four numbers dollars 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 and then with this one you're going to do um plus or minus sorry not plus or minus so you match dollar 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 and then you do the variables equal added together equals 10. so what does that look like so first you have to define what you're going to do so i'm going to use x and i'm going to use y and i'll come back and read what those are when i read the question so i'm just going to put it in so i'm going to say um dollars 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 so that's going to be three dollars and 75 cents and keep the order the same three dollars and 75 cents x and then two dollars and fifty plus two dollars and fifty is going to give me 35 dollars because he went to the bakery she bought 35 in total all right so i'm not even going to read the question but that's what it is all right and don't forget my so x and then y and then on this one it's just x plus y equals that number so x plus y equals 10. 
And now we're going to go define our variables, okay? So x is the one with the 3.75, which is each cupcake costs 3.75. So that's generally what you're looking for. All right, then to determine what each thing stands for, think about what, what the question is saying. So I'm going to look at the number, the one by itself, because that's going to be the easiest one, because I...